So uh, what we've got here is a set of nest blocks with cavities in them. And the cavities are made by putting a lid on top of some grooves in a board. And you'll notice that the nest blocks have different sizes of cavity because that's because we want to have different types of insect. The big insects can't get into small cavity and of course the small insects may have a little difficulty using a large cavity. So if we get some of these out of the way, uh, here we can see um, a little case of conflict. Um, we have a, um, some old nests which have mostly emerged and the nests here, 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 here and the back half of this cavity are all the what's often called the orchard mason bee, Osmia lignaria. And here is a dead Osmia lignaria that's been unable to get past the leafcutter bee's nest that's been built ahead of her nest, the nest that she was in, uh, in the cavity. So there is some conflict when you get more than one species in the cavity, but that's not that common. That's just debris that she's chewed her way through. So here we have the smaller cavities, and these are now this year's nests. And you can see, um, at least I can see, um, the grubs of the chrysomelid willow leaf beetle. And here are the larvae which have hatched from eggs and are devouring the paralysed grubs. Uh, this one at the very end has spun its cocoon and so there's a sort of um, uh, mm -hmm. wet paper looking structure which is actually uh, waterproof and tough uh, in which is the overwintering form. You notice that these uh, this year's larvae are very very watery, I don't know if you can see that, they're very shiny and quite distended here. But inside the cocoon they'll be uh, losing their water and hardening up to be like seeds which overwinter. Uh, there's no water to freeze when temperatures drop to minus 40 or whatever. There are also antifreezes that are being manufactured when they're inside the cocoon. So you can tell this species, this is Somorphis cristatus, because of the, um, the, the prey and this species is circumpolar, so it occurs in northern Europe as well. Um, and it always uh, has that particular prey. So these are wasps? It's a wasp with a single species of prey, which is the common case with wasps. Do you know what their prey is again? Uh, yeah. It's the chrysomelid uh, willow leaf beetle. It's a, a family of beetles called the chrysomelids, or leaf beetles. This stack comes from a, a different locality on the mainland. Uh, I should just mention that the island's a couple of degrees colder, so everything's running very much later here than it does on the mainland. And we are species of on Toronto Island. Have, uh, many of these species on the mainland have already emerged. So uh, here we see a block and in these cavities we have a variety of things. We have uh, what looks like an unsuccessful nest um, of uh, one of the potter wasps, um, probably Ancestor cerus antilope. Uh, next to it is a, a potter wasp nest that's emerged. Uh, the cell at the end has died, but this cell seems to have emerged, and I think it's drawn its way through the structure that was left there by a leaf cutter bee. A leaf cutter bee hasn't left a whole nest, it just began a nest and gave up. Uh, here we see some entire leaf cutter bee nests. This is a, a, a new nest of uh, the orchard mason bee Osmia lignaria. Uh, here there are three cocoons. The nest hasn't been stoppered. Uh, you notice these leaf cutter bees have densely packed leaves for about an inch uh, to prevent access to the nest. This nest is very lightly stoppered. There's no just a cell wall, no proper stopper here. So the one on the far end again is what kind of bee? Osmia lignaria. Oh, it's an osmia, so it's a spring bee. The spring bee, yeah. And they didn't emerge. Does that mean they're going to? No, they have emerged. This is the new nest. Oh, okay. So they've come back and they've yeah. they've already uh, made this for next That's year. Right. Yes. Yeah, so. And they used. What did, is that a leaf as well? What did the osmia use? Uh, this is mud. Yeah. And the, they've spun a cocoon. 
Right, and then so the megakaili next to it, which is the leaf cutter bee. Right. Do we know what kind of leaves they might have been using? No, I'm not sure. But um, their process of using the leaves, it looks to me like they're lining the whole nest with the leaf. They're not just making a stopper in between. That's right, they build cross walls and also they line the cell walls, so they make a yeah. cylinder. And they either make the cylinder out of one continuous piece of leaf or out of a series of pieces, which is what this one does. So these uh, are discs of leaves. Uh, like little discs that get cut out of your roses by this type of bee. Perhaps even this very bee. And they don't seem to partition between their there, there leaves, is, do they? There is actually, each of these is like a cup. So in a sense, there's a bottom to the cup and a top to the cup. So which is like a lid on the cup, so in that sense there is a, a partition between each individual nest. And the leafcutter bees uh, haven't yet emerged, they're going to come out? I'm not absolutely sure whether it's this year's or last oh year's, I have to look at the records. You mean, to the, and so they might come out this year and they might come out next year? Uh, they might be um, a live nest from last year, a dead nest from last year, or a new nest of this year. Okay. So one needs records from... Okay more than one year to be sure exactly what's going on. Okay. Uh, if I was to um, cut some of them open and I found grubs in them, then I'd know that they are this year's because uh, they would overwinter as something a little bit different.